my guest is Andrew Stutterford, who is a contributing editor at the National Review and has also written for the National Interest. Andrew, how likely is it that Jeremy Corbyn will become the next Prime Minister of the United Kingdom rather than Boris Johnson? Oh, the, 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 the sequence is interesting. I do think that Boris Johnson is going to become Prime Minister, but it may be for a very short time. I, I'm not saying that he's going to be the Lady Jane Grey of British uh, Prime Ministers, but uh, I think that he could, get, he could get into office, and if he pursues or tries to pursue a no-deal Brexit, um, then he will face a vote of no confidence. If there is a vote of no confidence, I think that is going to be very dicey indeed, and that he could, that he and the Conservatives could lose it, and that could trigger a general election. If there is a general election, and I think my guess is that Corbyn will win. If Corbyn did win, what would be the consequences, both financially and po politically, for England? What would a Corbyn reign look like? Uh, well, it would be a reign of error, and it would be a reign of terror. Um, the uh, Corbyn, I think, is one of the more sinister political figures to have emerged in, Brit emerged in Britain in many years. Uh, he's been around for a very long time, and he was briefly uh, my MP. Um, Why sinister? Uh, he, because he, he, he is a member of the uh, unreconstructed uh, hard left. Um, his, to the extent that he has read books, and he hasn't read that many, um, he, is, he is some form of Marxist. Um, he had a uh, curious uh, relationship with the IRA back in the 1970s, um, which I think, uh, you know, I think libel and slander law lawyers uh, probably uh, um, mean that one shouldn't say too much about that. Um, but what he, what he is, is really the classic sort of, it seems strange to refer to someone who may well be prime minister as, the, as, as, as a useful idiot. Um, but what he what he will what he will be is the front man of a of, of a Labour Party run by a small cabal of un, uh, un, of people who, unlike uh, Corbyn, are capable and very intelligent. And, and Corbyn is neither of those things. He he lives a, a disorganised life, and don't, we see no evidence either in his academic track record uh, or anything else of, of much uh, much going on upstairs. Um, on the other hand, um, if you look at the people behind him, I think the most interesting of them is uh, John McDonnell, uh, who would be the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, the, the, the Finance Minister. Um, he is a capable, bright man. Um, he, is, uh, he, he famously was interviewed years ago by the New Statesman, the British magazine. Uh, as, as I recall, that uh, he, he saw quite a lot in Trotsky and uh, quite a bit in Lenin, and he is a, cla a fairly classic um, revolutionary in the, uh, in the old early 20th century uh, model, um, updated of course for 21st century conditions, but he still believes these things, and he is a believer. I think, again, MacDonald also had an interesting relationship, um, conversations, should we put it that way, with the IRA back in the day, um, but he, he initially trained to be a Catholic priest, uh, that's not where he ended up, obviously, but he is a true believer, and there is no doubt that uh, uh, doing, uh, taking a sledgehammer to, to capitalism is part of his agenda. What does taking a sledgehammer mean in practical terms? In practical terms, um, it w would mean, I think what you would see is, well, the first thing that you would see is panic. Uh, if it looked like uh, the la Labour were going to win the election, um, you would see massive capital and um, the, the moment that they took office, uh, they, would introduce ca they would introduce capital controls. And even if uh, the UK was still in the EU at that point, they would be able to do so because there are various emergency provisions uh, that you can trigger. So these capital controls would, of course, be temporary. Uh, what, there would then be, what, you, what you would then see is um, uh, increases in taxes and I think that they would probably be at two levels. Uh, they make no secret, but they're perfectly honest about it, that they want to see a fairly substantial increase in taxation, and various ideas get floated from time to time. But on top of that, 
if there is a crisis, and I think there would be a crisis if they took office, they would probably introduce emergency taxation, and that emergency, I think, will turn out to last a very, very long time, but it would suit, suit, suit their purposes perfectly. And then what you would see is, so you would see capital controls, high taxation, uh, there would be nationalization. There would industry. be oh, nationalization has been promised, and interestingly, is actually quite popular in the UK. Uh, one of the uh, one of the myths that, that, that is told about uh, the Labour Party is how uh, on all their policies uh, there are outliers and would be uh, rejected by the British people. There's actually uh, on a lot of things. There's not much evidence that's the case. Things like nationalization of the railways uh, and some of the utilities. Um, would actually be uh, would be quite would be quite popular. I think the other thing that they would do so so, so those are, those are the basic things. I think in terms of attacking capitalists, you'd see nationalisation, you'd see high taxation, you'd see capital controls, um, and the other thing you would see is uh, a, a heightened worker representation on company boards. And I think that this would be uh, and possibly, if I recall. Mandatory uh, ownership of uh, sort of chunk of the shares. I'm not 100 percent sure of that, but you would see a belligerent form of worker co-determination. In Germany, you have a fairly benign form of the Mitbestimmung, uh, which is representation on boards. You see that in a lot of places in Europe. Uh, I think in the UK, you'd see something much more aggressive. Now, naturally, the Tories do not want to allow this scenario to come to pass. What is your prognostication? Do you think do you think that Johnson will become prime minister? But, but why would the Tories select him if this seems to be the route that you're sketching out? Um, well, I, I think, uh, Jake, it would be fair to say that, 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 that I have been surprised by the, 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 the state of Tory affairs for the last three or four years. Um, I think that why they will choose uh, Johnson Assuming that, and he's been behaving a little bit strangely. There, there was a, there was a, there was a, there was a personal sort of scandal um, uh, in the last few days, but it, it's, he seems oddly like his, his his heart isn't in it, and I think that that's worth um, uh, that's worth noting and remembering because we saw something a bit like that in the immediate aftermath of the uh, referendum. But I think the reason the Tories will will, will, will choose him, um, assuming that he does campaign actively. Is this the decision has now been taken away from the MP that is given to the party members? Uh, Boris Johnson has long been a, a lion of the of the party. So far as the party members are concerned, uh, they love his speeches, they laugh at his jokes, they think that he is a benign um, uh, and, and, and clever figure. I mean, uh, he, he speaks to their hearts as well as as well as their heads. Um, the, uh, the, the, the problem is going to be um, what they, those who think about it and talking to a few uh, sensible and fairly clear-eyed Tories who will somewhat reluctantly support Boris Johnson, um, the, what the, the, the way they see it is that this, this is the last throw in that they are appalled by the, as am I, uh, by the prospect of a no-deal Brexit where we seem to be headed. And um, what they think is that the only person who is ruthless enough uh, to change direction and say, well, maybe we need to take, uh, just slow things down a bit and take another look and then be able to sell it uh, is Boris Johnson. Now that is a long shot, a very long shot. And, and every, as every day goes by, uh, Johnson is boxing himself more in to a fixed deadline of October the 31st, which I think almost by definition means he will go for a, a no-deal Brexit. But there is still a hope uh, among some of those who support him that he is the one he is the one Nixon that could go to China, the one de Gaulle that could give up Algeria. Turning to the United States, we were talking earlier about tax reform and finances here in America. Why do you what is your assessment of the Republican tax plan and what impact will it have on Trump's fortunes, electoral fortunes, in 2020? 
Well, I, I, I was, as, as you know, Jacob, I, w I was opposed to large chunks of the uh, Trump stuff uh, tax plan, uh, the so-called overhaul. Why not? The, the Republican Party is saying that it juiced, helped juice the economy. Trump is claiming it was a big victory. What's the problem? Well, uh, there's, there's, there's actually not that much evidence that it juiced the economy. It probably it may have brought a brief uh, steroid rush. Um, but the real, the, 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 the real pr problem with it, I think, are, are both economic and political. Uh, on, 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 on the economic side, um, I was concerned. I'm not a sort of Pete Peterson uh, type uh, deficit uh, worrier, but I don't ignore deficits either. And the idea that uh, you can cut your way to, uh, you can cut your way out of the deficit by cutting taxes, you can grow yourself out of the deficit, I am not so very convinced about. And I do worry to a degree about the, the way that the debt is piling up. Um, but politically, it struck me, and I think that the economic reward, the growth that the tax cut generated, such as it is, um, is not going to significantly reduce the deficit. I see no evidence of that, and I think that the growth that it does generate, if we give it the benefit of some doubt, um, will, uh, will fade off with the normal, with the normal cycle. Um, but politically, I thought it was also a mistake uh, I'm all for a tax cut. Believe me, I have absolutely no love of, 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 of taxes. Um, uh, but but, but it, it was also, to, to a degree, a tax raising uh, exercise, or it, its message was, was muddled enough for people to think that it might be. And if you look at the polls, um, a lot of people didn't seem to really realize that their taxes were being cut. And I think part of the reason for that was that uh, he removed the, or he removed, he substantially reduced the state and local tax deduction. Um, I argued at the time, uh, ahead of the results, uh, normally my, my prophecies all end up uh, in total humiliation for myself, but I was right about, about this, that this would cost the Republican seats in the, on the coasts, uh, and, in, and in, indeed it did. And I thought it was a mistake, and a, and a continuing mistake, for two reasons. Uh, the, 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 the main reason was, and the underlying reason, is that the deductions for uh, state and local tax and also for actually real estate, uh, for, for, for mortgage interest, although that's still at a very high level, um, they were regarded as politically untouchable. And they had, if not bi bi bipartisan support, they had bipartisan acceptance. And the way the tax and the IRS and the Democrats work, if you have something that keeps taxes down that no one is going to touch, um, then you keep it in place. What the Republicans then did was they uh, basically removed, they, they basically knocked down or substantially reduced one of the great bulwarks against higher taxation in the US and left it open for further tinkering as we go forward. Uh, that, I think, to put it mildly, was unwise. Um, the, then you have to look at the, uh, and economically too, if you look at where growth is, I, I personally believe that lower tax rates do generate growth. They do generate also, they encourage uh, entrepreneurs to get to work. Um, we have, it seems to me, paradoxically, to do a move which increases marginal tax rates in many cases to entrepreneurs uh, in, in, in the states that actually are generating quite a lot of the jo new jobs, and that is in, the, in the New York. I'm a New York City resident, so I'm just totally biased on all this, but also in California. So what you're doing is you are increasing the tax rates on the entrepreneurs in two or, th two or three of some of the most successful business-creating areas of the country, and that is actually not what I thought uh, Republicans were, were, were meant to be about. And the idea that they can take all, take all that to Texas. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Um, but you do need a, a clustering uh, effect generally to, to, uh, to create areas of excellence and areas of job creation. And what they did was they damaged that. Politically, not only though, there was another problem. Not only was there, have they given carte blanche for, for higher taxes, effective higher taxes from the Democrats, uh, when the time comes, and the time I think will come, um, but also what they have done is that they have removed 
the last Republican beachheads um, on in quite a lot of states. Um, to, do, to use the shorthand, the coastal states is a little bit more complicated than that. There is, uh, we all know, I think, uh, there is a clustering effect on, um, uh, on, on how people vote. And there were a, uh, a lot of people who voted Republican on in in what you, in, in the deep uh, in the deep blue states, um, and they voted Republican. They didn't much like the social agenda, but they said, "Well, at least we can rely on the Republicans to reduce our taxes." What the reduction of the, in in the salt uh, deduction and the the, the 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 slight scraping back on the mortgage interest did is it removed that certainty. In their heads, they are now no longer so sure that the, the Republicans are the, the tax-cutting uh, party, and they, um, they have been left very vulnerable in the event, or much more vulnerable in the event that the Democrats do come in and do increase taxes. And I think that they will not forget, forgive the, forget this, or particularly forgive the Republicans for that. That may not turn them into Democratic voters, but it may make them stay-at-home voters, or it may mean that where before they gave, I'll make up a number, uh, $2,000 to the Republicans, now it becomes $500. And what you will then get is a essentially a monoculture in those former Republican beachheads. And I don't think, and, it, and, I, and I just don't think that those will ever come back. Can the Republicans win when they don't uh, attract any any support on the east and west coasts? Um, uh, time will tell, but I think that uh, it's going to be an uphill struggle over the longer term, and it may also mean um, changes in the Republican Party, which are not necessarily for the good. Well, Andrew, on that note, thank you for your lucid remarks. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Great to be here.